Hey guys, welcome to the happiest hour on earth. This week, we're going to be talking about the movies that make us the most emotional. Yes. If you heard last week's episode, our last question in the never have I ever section was never have I ever cried in a Disney movie. Well, we definitely have. I'm pretty uh, sure all of our followers have too. We, we've all we know you, we feel you. Pixar we've and all Disney. Cried. Oh yeah. Uh, so tonight we're gonna be going through our own lists, our top ten most emotional Disney and Pixar movies. So. And this is not even just our top ten together. We have we have we're doing our ones. separate top ten list, and we have not looked at each other. So I feel like this might get a little bit uh, a little bit dicey. I mean, yeah, like we're we're gonna have some different list lists, change, I believe. Yeah. So. It's going to be fun. Uh, let's get rolling here. So as we were talking about this episode and just emotions in general, we're like, hey, you know what? Since we're not talking about something in the park, we shouldn't make a drink from the park. We should make a drink that, you know, kind of coincides with a movie and what movie better than Inside Out as we're talking about emotions. So um, as we were thinking about different parts of the movie, I think the most emotional part is when sadness and joy find that they could coexist together. And because of sadness, um, joy, memories. you know, can flourish because of that. So we actually made our own drink. Um, it's it's kind original. of based on a couple of things that we've seen, but we did make it our our own and so as you can see it might have mixed a little bit since the time we made this but it's a nice yellow uh top and then the the blue bottom so like sadness is needed in order to spark joy and for people to come around so um there's a nice layered drink we'll make a reel for this obviously um which are always fun but uh rum vodka and pineapple base the blue is the blue curacao of course mm -hmm. um but we had so much fun trying to make this definitely made a couple of tries before yeah. we got to the right thing so um i'm glad we finally figured it out and we did come up with our own name for it we decided to christen this drink memory island the memory island we yes. came up with i mean no m came up with this name um, one, because, you know, memories and, and inside out and like in just our own life, but also Island, it's totally it's an a pretty drink. tropical it's, drink. It's, it's, yeah, it's a coconut, juice, pineapple. Coconut yeah. rum. So memory Island just fit. And so it's props to M for coming up with that. Thank you. Freaking Thank name. you. That's such a, such a great name. Um, and then we also, as we said last week, <laughs> we're making either a new drink or a new snack each week. So we made a new drink this week so that we could have an old snack, which is the churros. Churros so. will be reappearing in our episodes many times. Oh, yeah. They're always going to be our fallback. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're literally just the best. Yeah. And, and we, we still have, have plenty so left in our fridge. So. Okay. Cheers. So obviously so good. But let's go ahead and try this drink. It's good. It's good. It's really good. It's, I like um, I like the sparkling water in it. Yeah, so it we put some sparkling little, some, water in there. It helps it, gives it a little, be less sweet. Because I think I, I did try one rendition, and it was too much like tropical juice, which is and blue amazing. Um, but if you want a little bit more of a, I don't know, a more grown-up flavor. <laughs> yeah, a little less sweet flavor. Add a little bit of sparkling water before you do the blue curacao. It and adds some sparkle and minimizes the sweet a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Which it is helps. so funny. I love how, like, when you turn 21, all you want is, like, the sweetest thing possible. And then now, like, <laughs> edging on 30, <laughs> yep. like, which is crazy. Speaking of which. But now you're just, like, less, less sweetness. Yes. He just celebrated his 28th birthday last 28th week. 28th birthday, yeah. Definitely inching up on the 30, but... I'm getting there, Birthday but, uh, boy over here. And, quick side note... Oh, yeah. This bad boy right here was my gift to him. We found this amazing shop called Subtle Dust Subtle on Instagram. Dust. Yep. They have some amazing Disneyland-inspired tees. Oh, and yeah. stickers and all kinds of fun stuff. And yeah, huge shout out because 
Go Mr. find them on Instagram. Is, is it at Subtle Dust or is it at Subtle Dust Company? What Just is it? Subtle Dust. At Subtle Dust. Okay. I would They're stand amazing. up, but it, my head would get cut off. It'd be weird. Yeah. Um, but go find Great the shirt. This is a, the Space, the Space Mountain, Mountain V2. Uh, the it first version awesome. was like kind of a acid wash gray. And I think they yeah. were out of stock, but this was the new one. And this one is fantastic. And, and they have so many amazing shirts. So, so um, many. And I'm definitely going to be buying one for myself. I just got him one for oh, now yeah. but i'm trying to figure out my purchase oh for sure so go follow them on instagram tell them the happy sour on earth sent you um <laughs> and i'll we'll definitely be buying some more shirts so for sure settled dust we love you even though we don't know you but the shirt you make is great awesome. teas. great teas um so yeah uh so before we get started on this um i'm gonna yeah. do the quickest disney news because i know by the time this episode comes out It'll be kind of late news, out. but um, <laughs> well, churro, if maybe. you are fully vaccinated, you no longer have to wear a mask at Disneyland and I think Disney World Park as well. Um, that it goes for outside and inside. Also, Disneyland, as they made this announcement, specified that fully vaccinated people do not need to wear a mask inside. So I think with that distinction... If you're not vaccinated, you don't even need to wear a mask outside. So um, hopefully with this, I know there's, you know, some people are very touchy on this subject and, you know, some people might still want to wear masks. Good for you. Um, if you still want to do that, if you want to go without them um, and, you know, are vaccinated, then good for you as well. Um, but the one thing we're hoping for is hopefully with this, you know, now that California is opening, there will be character meet and greets again because literally so ready. we are ready so to excited to meet characters again. Even if they're say, hey, you have to wear a mask um, to meet the characters. I'm fine with that. I just want to I just want to hug a character. I'll turn my face so they don't uh, so I don't, <laughs> you know, breathe on them. But I just want to I just want to hug a character. We're all about hugging characters here. Yep. At the Happiest Hour on Earth, and so. I'm dying to get our little boy to I, hug mickey he's just like starting to comprehend who mickey is he's almost mm. a year old and i'm just dying for him to like go give mickey a hug so be the cutest thing ever that's gotta happen it's gotta on happen first trip and the second piece of news is that fireworks are coming back starting july 4th so Yay! That is so exciting. I don't know exactly. I know Happily Ever After will be coming back for Disney World. I think it said that Mickey's Mix Magic will be coming back for Disneyland, um, which isn't even a firework heavy show. Um, but hopefully, you know, hopefully they're able to do some more fireworks um, starting that July 4th. But that's pretty much it. Oh, also, um, one quick thing that will be the quickest thing ever. We're filming this on a Tuesday. Logie episode two comes out tomorrow. We <laughs> highly enjoyed the first episode. We are so excited to see where this thing goes. And uh, Loki, you're amazing. I'm excited for all the uh, all the Loki appearances come. in the park already. They've been they've had some cool stuff. So, yep. anyways, uh, let's get our sat on. I think it's let's time to get go. our emo emo our time emo, Disney emo time. Join on. us in. Are, this is gonna are crying. I feel like this might might get heated between us because we we don't even know what our list is. Yeah, and um, I think we might actually differ on this. Usually, you know, we've known each do. other for over ten years, uh, been dating for over ten years, and a lot of times we're very similar on things. But I think our emotional state when it comes to Disney movies can differ. So totally. I am super excited to see. You what we come up with i want you to start first <laughs> with number 10 well okay i, picked, I want a churro okay i picked based on like like what i connect with most because i think all disney and pixar movies have like emotional aspects to them right but there's mm -hmm. certain ones that you just connect with that just hit harder okay yeah. so with that in mind and actually if you think about it depending on the life stage you're at too exactly right D yes and so that is this exactly on where you are with now? a lot of my answers here all right uh so that in mind hmm? my number 10 is dumbo 
All right. Okay. Friends is a great movie. Dumbo. Um, we we haven't sense. watched a ton of like the older Disney animated movies. Um, recently. Well, it's been like a while. We, we have, but we usually steer clear from the ones that are going to wreck us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like, we haven't watched a lot of those ones, like, that just break your heart <laughs> as much. Yeah. But know, we did know. last night look up scenes from this <laughs> and a couple of others that we'll also get into. And I have to say, three for three, all that we looked up, I was bawling. And all of them, just in like yeah. one scene from each of them, this being one of them, yeah. the scene where Dumbo's mom is locked away and he's like <sighs> wanting to get to her, but he can't, but they're just like hugging with their trunks. It is the cutest freaking He's scene. the cutest little elephant. And, and then he's, he's sad at first, but then he's just enjoying his mother's yeah. you know, comfort. Exactly. Oh, and that's why when you said the life stage thing... Becoming a mom made anything involving like a mother and son or even just mother and child oh, like hit so much harder. Yeah. So, yeah, I was like bawling in that scene. Oh and gosh, it's so cute. Not only that, but just like any like circus stuff is just so sad to me to watch yeah. now with like animals. And yeah. Anyways. Yeah. So Dumbo was my number Dumbo. 10. All right. OK. Yeah. And and. So mine, I'm not going to do too many spoilers, but mine, I do have a, on my list. It's not number 10, but it's it's a little bit higher up. I think the reason why it's higher up for me, and it might be for you too, is that Dumbo's mom doesn't die. <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's what, it was such an emotional scene, but you know Dumbo's mom is okay. And that's why it's a little bit higher on mine too. But yep. my number 10 is actually, and I'm sorry, there's a lot of hate on this movie. Not maybe not a lot of hate, but maybe not a lot of love for this movie. But I connect with it in a way. Um, for some reason, the first time I watched it, and then every time I watch it since, I connect with the scene. But my number ten, and this may surprise you, is Brave. Um, I think that you know that scene of her, like almost becoming a bear, and then kind of coming back to reality, and then. By the end, when Merida literally thinks that her she won't see her mom again, um, and her just kind of rethinking how she kind of treated her mom um, in the past has always been this interesting perspective to me, who like was an angsty teen. Um, and there's nothing wrong about being very independent as a teen, but like almost this like Merida almost had this kind of like you know kind of get out of my life kind of thing. Like I had, I feel like sometimes as a teen um, and then realizing that um, parents mean so much more than just your, you know, on the whim emotions and everything. And so I'm going to have to put that in my list as number 10. So All right. yeah. Number nine. All right. Number nine for me is Inside Out. Hey. Yeah. Inside hey. Out is Full of the emotions, obviously. Ugh. That's the theme of the movie. Um, there's a lot that hits hard in yeah. terms of just growing up and all of the emotional battles that you go through from childhood into teenhood and adulthood and all yeah. of that. Um, it's just... It's really... An emotional one to watch. Um, yeah. The scene that always gets me for some reason is the one with Bing Bong mm. when she has to just kind of let go of that memory of her imaginary friend. It's just really oh my gosh. sad and sweet, like very bittersweet. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Inside Out is my number nine. Oh, man, I can't handle some of the scenes in that movie. Um, I know. But number nine for me is going to be Dumbo. Um, so what your number 10 was, I, ah, man, there's so many parts of that movie that just really wreck me. Um, like you talked about the scene where she's holding him in her, mm -hmm. in her little trunk and you see all the other mothers and children of other different animals, like right in that scene. And, and she has to be behind a little 
little cage. Like that is the saddest thing ever. The reason why it's so high up on the list for me is just because we know Dumbo's mom is okay. At the end, like she's reunited with him and um and everything's okay. But that scene, oh my gosh, when she, you know, is trying to protect Dumbo from the stupid kids and making yeah. fun of him. Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, so since we know Dumbo's mom is okay, I put it at number nine. So still on the list, but still a little bit higher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, very emotional. Yeah. For me, moving on to number eight, Fox and the Hound. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Fox and the Hound is one that we rewatched a few scenes for. Uh, it was a tough watching very yeah very emotional when the old lady has to drop todd off in the woods um and you just you're like listening to her reminisce on their memories uh, together like and she was i mean they were each other's companions since she had found him as like a little baby fox and it's just like so so sweet it is and sad it's just, gosh. oh my gosh, I was like bawling. I know, I know. And there's just multiple parts of that movie that just made me so emotional. Yeah. So I feel you. I feel you that it's in your top 10. Um, mm-hmm. My number eight is going to be Tarzan. And um, I mean, I really connect with this movie even more now that we have a little son. Um, there's certain, certain parts in this movie um, Two parts in particular. Uh, one where Tarzan just doesn't feel like he belongs and he's rubbing mud in his face. And and Kala just says, hey, what I see is two eyes and nose, you know, hands or whatever. And he, and there's just this emotional, you know, bond mm-hmm. there. But then he realizes that even though he has those, he's still a little bit different. And ah, that part always breaks me. And then you'll oh, be, and my heart comes on. And it's, oh, I'm just crying i'm just a mess but then the other part is the suit yeah when he wears that suit and he decides to go with jane oh Oh, yeah get rid of jane just stay with your mom (laughs) Uh, no but that that scene is so so tough and it's his dad's suit like his actual dad's suit so there's this kind of thing like who he actually like would have been if the gorillas hadn't found him yeah like what like Kind of like who he was meant to be versus who he actually he is. is. Oh. That and, and just man, how Disney's able to put something like that in there. It's not even like if you don't think about it, it'll just be kind of a little small scene. But like the fact that there's so many things playing into certain scenes in that movie. And I know a lot of people just think of this as a fun movie. It's Bill Collins who just kills the the soundtrack for it. But it's mainly a fun movie, but man, those two scenes just really just rip you apart. And so it has to be in my top 10 list, oh, yeah. um, especially now that I have a son. So that's going to be my number eight. For sure. All right. My number seven is Bambi. Uh, um, yep. That has to be in the list. Definitely on the list. Um, the saddest movies. Very, very sad. Obviously. We don't even need to talk about why. We all know why it's the saddest. Uh, yeah. We rewatched this last night, this scene. We um, rewatched a lot of sad parts in Disney movies. Just it preparing for this, yeah. you know. Hard thing to we do. We got our email on. We wanted sure. to see kind of where we were at at this point in our lives with these emotions. And it definitely still hits us hard. Yeah. I for sure cried in that scene um, when Bambi's trying to find his mom and he can't. Oh, yeah. And then he finds so, his dad, who so. then takes over caring for him. Very emotional. Yeah. Very sad. I know. Yep. This is in my list, too. I'll talk about it in a second. Yeah. But, man, that is so tough. Um, so, my number seven is going to be Lion King. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the saddest scenes ever, for sure, in a Disney movie. But I think because the rest of the movie is... So happy and 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 soon after Mufasa's death, rest in peace, Mufasa, mm-hmm. he finds Timon and Pumbaa. That's totally the opposite way. It does help 
me, um, which I'm glad for because I can actually watch that movie. I think some of these movies on here are so sad and don't do that full, like, they'll get happy later, but not as quick. So I just feel like I can't watch them. But Lion King will take you from, like, destroyed from Mufasa, but then it'll bring you back up to, like, okay, it's, it's watchable time. again. Because, you know, yeah, exactly. No worries at all. Yeah. Um, and so True. that's why it lands number seven on my list. All right. Um, even though it's so sad, it doesn't, you know, can't get over that pretty quick. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, for me, number six is Finding Nemo. <sighs> Another emotion filled movie. Oh, yeah. Um, from best. that first scene with Marlon and Coral Good. just hanging out, having fun in their new home, waiting for their little babies to no. hatch. To then Coral and all but one of uh, the babies being gone from the movie. Stupid eel or whatever. Yeah. Barracuda. What? Barracuda, I think. Uh, Barracuda is so so sad um, and then it's you know it's emotional for different reasons throughout the movie after that um, the bond between Nemo and his dad is just it's you know it's rocky of course because the beginning Marlon is just he's very protective of his son and he wants to protect him at all costs because of what happened mm -hmm. when he was you know born and then you just see Nemo kind of become this independent kid. And then, you know, we all know the story. But by the end, their bond is formed again. And it's just yeah, so that's stronger than ever. Yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. Oh, it's so good. Great. Movie. Um, so my number six is going to be Inside Out. Um, I think a lot of people talk about Bing Bong's death, um, about the saddest part. And that is, you know, that part always crushes me. I think um, I think since I was such an angsty teen, um, I think the one part that really sticks out to me is when she just kind of like cuts off her emotions and just gets on a bus and drives away. And then she comes to that realization that, oh, she needs her family. And she comes back and she just, you know, at first is so just kind of numb to emotion. And then her parents just come in and just shower her, shower her with, with love and emotion. And then and she breaks the down. And memories of Emma. all the times when she's a little girl. And oh my home. gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I need to watch that again. But that literally will always make me so emotional. And then also the other thing, just like this drink, eh? um, when Joy realizes that it was because of sadness and her um, important role in Riley's life um that joy was able to come about and that sometimes if it weren't for sadness joy wouldn't even have a place in her core memories and um that was something that i never even thought about before but watching that movie i was like oh man there's so many times that joy kind of popped into my life because of people gathering around because of the sadness that i had in my life and so Man, that, that has to earn a pretty high spot on my list. And so Inside Out was number six. All right. Number five for me is Lion King. Yeah. Which we just discussed. Yes. Can't get past that scene of Mufasa's death. It's, it's the hardest. It's rough. Oh, man. And the way that little Simba crawls under his arm. No. And just wants him to come back. It's so, so sad. Yeah, and, and thinking about, you know, World of Color at Disney mm -hmm. and that that scene especially always just yeah. crushes me. I mean, when the you hear him in. calling out for his dad, oh my gosh. So there's no, Really, that is one of the saddest things. Ever. It really is. But a lot of the movie is very happy and joyful and exciting. So it's not, I mean, that scene could make it closer to number one for me but a lot of the other of the rest of the movie is happier so yeah for five. sure all right so my number five is, is bambi mm -hmm. um we've already talked about this but uh bambi not being able to find his mother and how he ran so fast just like his mom said to and don't look back 
And then he finally gets to where they need to be, and then he looks back, and his mom's not there, and then Ben comes out. Oh my gosh. Uh, Bambi is one of those movies that wrecked me, and I haven't seen it since I was a kid because I <laughs> never wanted to rewatch it because I was just traumatized. Yeah, I live that, that um, kind of emotion. Yeah, I, uh, it puts you through so much. I think the reason why it, it could have been higher in this list, but you don't see her actually get shot, and Bambi didn't see it either. I think that kind of helps it, but it had to be like right in the center because it is one of the saddest things in the world. Uh, but thankfully, you don't see Amy's mom, you know, you know, yeah. okay. So, number four, what would you say? My is your number, number four? four is up. Oh, up, okay. This was mine as well for number four. <sighs> well, we match so up finally. This. That's good. Yeah, yeah, let's discuss. Number four for us. Okay. Let's we got to talk about the first scene, the opening scene. Really the only sad part in the movie. Yeah. But it's so well crafted. Yeah. And it just kills your heart. Yep. You just watch this life play out, this marriage that, you know, they began best friends as little kids. Turned into teenagers. You just watch everything play out. Like, there's, like, no words spoken after, like, the first, very first part where they're little kids and they meet. There's no words after that. It's just beautiful music and watching their lives play out, watching all these things happen in their life and their marriage. And then Ellie passes away. Yeah. And they have rough times throughout their marriage, you know, like the, you know, infertility, which is so real and so tough and, um, and just so many different things. But so then they find things. joy back in each other. And then uh, she passes and it's like, how does an animated movie make you feel that much emotion in what, five minutes? Mm hmm. And, um, that's a love story. Yeah, really, seriously. I mean, I think that's one of the most uh, emotionally crafted montages that's ever been in a movie. Ever. Yeah. Not even animated, but just ever. And um, really, I mean, I think it's props to Pixar for being able to do something like that. And, yeah. and, and speak to a lot of people who have gone through tough uh, times. And so... And then it's just man. so, so sweet the way, like... His goal after that, when he's about to be, like, kicked out of his home and mm. put into, like, an old folks home. Yeah. And he's like, nope, I'm going to go fulfill my destiny and go where me and my wife always wanted to go. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And not only just travel, but, you know, they always wanted a kid as well. So he, after a while, <laughs> takes a little bit, but... He does take he Russell under Russell. his, his yeah. wing. And so he's able to fulfill these things, even though his wife is gone. And and she was still a part of that memory, even yeah. though even though it was without her. So man up you. I mean, it's tough. These last like top five. Uh, no, top. All these top 10 were super hard. It but could, it could closer, have gotten closer could have to gotten number closer. one for sure. Yeah. But the first scene is definitely the saddest. Part then of that gets, movie, you know, then it's a little pretty, more adventurous, yeah. Pretty happy throughout it, so it's, yeah, yeah, had to be in there, but it's in my number four spot. Yeah. All right, so we are now in the top three, which is so insane. Um, oh man, I I'm so curious what your number three is. So let everyone know. All right, my number three is Tarzan. Oh yeah, okay. Tarzan is. I that's like up there in my favorite Disney movies. I connect with even more now than ever because mm. I'm a mom with a son. As you were talking about already, I don't need to go totally into detail like mm. you did, but the scenes with Kala and Tarzan yeah. hit so hard now. You'll be in my heart. That song will always make me cry. Dude. Always. Um now I'm like, yeah, I, I was rethinking this one already. I, I just can't. Yeah, both of the scenes that you talked about 
where he's like he doesn't feel like he belongs with them and he's trying to look more like them and you know putting mud on his face it's so so sweet the way that Kala comes in and just, just is like accepts him for oh, like is, yeah. we you know we have eyes and a nose and hands all that so mm. sweet but then oh my gosh i just ball when he puts the suit on and that comes out and he looks like a man suit. and she's crying and they embrace it's just waterworks again i can't yeah, handle dude, it i don't know like i looked at you know i just wanted to see what other people thought too for like emotional movies and Tarzan was not on the list at That's all, insane. which I was like no. insane. Like literally, Tarzan, they, Tarzan could have been definitely higher too. But man, that movie literally just makes me die every time. Every it's time, so that emotional. bond, that mother son bond, yeah, is yeah. so so real, and it'll always be such special to me because of that, and. I've talked about it before, but you'll be in my heart. I listened to on the way home from the hospital with our little boy and it was a lullaby version. So it's like, it's even more. Yeah. So special. I love that song. And it's that so movie. great. Uh, three. I feel you. Three. Okay. Number three for me is it has a three in the name. <gasps> Toy Story three. We match um, up. Wait, no, your number three was Tarzan. Sorry, I thought we were on okay, two. So we're My off. bad. We're off by one. We're off by one. Yeah, um, okay, we're off. Toy Story 3, uh, and which is great because you can talk about it right after. Um, mm -hmm. Toy Story 3 is a different set of emotions than I think you might find in other Disney and Pixar movies, right? I think a lot of them have to do with, with death, which is really, really, really tough. Um, but Toy Story 3 struck a chord with me uh because it came out right when i was around andy's age right so College. the idea of finally kind of letting go of your childhood and, and and not necessarily letting go of your childhood i think that we still have part of our childhood now because we we do love disney we love going to the parks and we're able to kind of tap and into tap, that again yeah, yeah, exactly. but um but did come a point where it's like well, can't, can't really bring, play with toys forever. I can't bring my stuffed animal to college because that's weird. <laughs> um, but you know that whole thing where we we came to that realization of like, oh my gosh, like we are now officially in that in that group that it's not it's not socially acceptable to, to play with toys. Anymore. And um and and also the other thing too is just that Andy was able to um keep kind of his legacy through another kid who had an imagination as strong as he did. I think that was so special and so amazing. And that movie made me cry so much. Mm -hmm. And so it needed to be in, in my top three. Yep. Well, it's in my top two. Hey, -oh. as I already mentioned. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you, you know, hit all the points. It's just, especially being, the age that you can identify with Andy uh, is just so, so special because yeah. you watch the bond that he had with his toys and he's, he just has to get to the point where he's allowing himself to pass them on to someone who can appreciate them the way that he did. Yeah. And it's just so, so sweet. So that tough. last scene will always get it's me it's beautiful every man, time that music it's like the way that he ugh. hands over woody to bonnie and then he plays with his toys one last time with her <laughs> is so sweet. so sweet and oh, then man. it just ends with woody and buzz saying so long partner as oh, andy drives gosh. away yeah and andy says thanks guys <gasps> oh my gosh yeah. it's so sweet it like is so great especially after watching the other movies and watching him as a little kid play with his toys through toy story one and toy story two and now he's an adult and he's like going away anyways it's just yeah, yeah. it is one of the most emotional always gonna be Pixar one of my favorite ever. definitely yeah. one of the most emotional for me i oh, for sure cannot watch it without crying Oh yeah, same here. I've same cried here. every single time. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so amazing. That's your number two. Um, my number two is going to be 
Coco. <laughs> um, Coco, I remember in the theaters the first time I ever watched it and probably the second, third time I ever watched it too. From the point that he sings Remember Me to um, to uh, a Corazon? A Corazon. Proud Corazon. Proud Corazon. <laughs> um, through that point, through the credits, I was just, I didn't stop crying for, you know, what the 15 minutes it was or whatever. Um, I have a connection with with that uh because my grandmother had alzheimer's and um and man yeah i i don't think like out of all the new movies that movie made me uh cry more than any other movie um and that's that's pretty much all to say about it i mean it's such a beautiful movie about culture and family and um and also being open right because uh, they were shutting something off that was literally the thing that would make her feel alive again. And then, um, and just the fact that the great grandson was able to, you know, bring that back. Bring that back. Um, man, that was a powerful, powerful movie. And that, that, that was my number two. So here we are at our number one spots. Yep. That is my number one. <laughs> Coco. Yeah. Coco's number one for me. Yeah. I mean, it It was a almost a tie between those last two for me, I think. But Coco... Coco connects with me so strongly because of my grandmother. Yeah. And I know that you have the tie with your grandmother as well. But yeah. both of our grandmas are gone now. Um, but his had Alzheimer's. And mine had a stroke and couldn't speak, but could sing if um, mm. if there was music going that she knew and she could sing along to, she was yeah. able to do that because that part of her brain still worked. So I don't always connect with me in that mm. way. Coco is uh, definitely up there on my favorite list from Pixar. And I never knew that I was going to love it as much as I did. I think I've talked about this before, but I didn't know how I was going to feel about it when I went to see it in theaters. Um, I was kind of like indifferent a little bit, but I fell in love with it. Yeah. And it once again will make me cry my eyes out every single time I watch it. That yeah. scene with Coco and Miguel when he sings Remember Me. It's just. It's, You're done. It just sucks the tears right out of my eyes. Yeah. It's so Seriously. special. I feel you. Oh Where's your gosh. number one? So my number one goes back to Disney classics. Um, I think that Coco probably would have been my number one, but because, because this movie literally made me never want to watch it again <laughs> when I was a kid. Um, my number one had to be Fox and the Hound. <laughs> Um, I think there's so many sad parts of this movie that, um, you know, like Em said earlier, uh, when the old lady, what was her name? Tweed? Tweedle? <laughs> uh, not Tweed, something. What? Uh, I think her name Tweedle is something like that. Tweedle, when Tweedledum <laughs> dropped off, uh, no. Um, when the old lady, old Miss Lady, uh, <laughs> dropped off Todd um, in the wilderness and the and his facial expressions as he's like, Oh, we're going on an adventure. Oh, wait, wait. Are you just dropping me? Oh, oh, there's so ah. many different like uh, faces that he makes during this that make it so emotional and so tough. And then the fact that it's not just, um, you know, a lady dropping off her pet in the wilderness. It's it's the relationship between Todd and Copper that is broken. The fact that Todd and Copper have this um, tough reunion. When he when Todd fights off the bear, and then they're they don't see each other again, but Todd is still watching from a distance, seeing his previous owner and um and then and his best friend, you know, from back in the day. And there's so many things that are just so tough about that movie. Um that I do want to rewatch now, but literally when I was I remember when I was like, I don't know, seven or something, I was like, 
Never, never watching this again. Watch this again. <laughs> I think it also probably coincided with a time that I lost one of my pets. I think uh, when I lost mm. my first dog, my first family dog, um, and that mixed with with that movie. Uh, I was mm-hmm. like, nope, I don't want to think about that ever again. <laughs> now I've kind of grown from that, and I should watch it again. But um, Fox and the Hound will always destroy me, so I think that's why it had to be number one. Even though um, I find some of these movies more emotional on certain types certain of emotions levels, than others. Yeah. But, um, but Hey, you know what we said last week as we were doing our fun, our fun Disney game that we're going to talk yep. about something super sad this week. And so we said, you know what? We're going to go we're for doing. it. We're going to sad it up. And, uh, we did. Hey, we did. So but you guys let us know. Yes. Yeah, exactly. What movies are your most emotional? Um, but yeah, what were we going to say? I was just going to say that thinking about this and like combining the Disney and Pixar movies made me realize like how different Disney and Pixar both go about yes. bringing your emotions out. Yeah. Um, a lot of the Disney movies. Oh, you know what? Moana could have been in there too. I just thought about that. I always mm. cry when her grandmother dies. That's yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a really sure. sad, sad. Yeah, scene. And I mean, even even uh, more recently, Raya the Last Dragon, like mm-hmm. her and her father, like there's yeah. I mean, they do, Disney, they do it so well. Disney does do that a lot. I think a lot of the emotion that comes out of you is due to like death. There's a lot of death scenes that yeah. are just so hard to watch and like familiar so sad things like family very family yeah. oriented yeah whereas pixar i think they tap into like everything yeah it's experiences experiences memories like growing older yeah everything. there's like every everything on the spectrum is hit with pixar it's not yeah. just sadness like like with inside out it's joy and sadness coinciding together to create memories and you know things like that um so yeah that that kind of just hit me as i was like this list disney's almost like hits you in places where you wouldn't even expect or or, sorry 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 pixar Mm -hmm. um where disney is like oh obviously that's sad because it's you know something that i've thought about in my life too yeah Pixar is like dude I bet you didn't even think about this in your life. Yeah. And you're like, oh my gosh, my heart is broken. The way that they're broken. able <laughs> to, like, like, just, I don't know. I feel like it caters to so many crowds. Like, I just can't believe how Coco, like, fits so well into both of our relationships with our grandmothers. Yeah. He's a musician as well. So like Miguel playing music to make her remember just all of it tied in so much to like the way that we um, related to our grandmothers. And I was very close with my grandma. So it just had to be number one for me. But Pixar just really knows how to like craft their films to cater to emotions yeah in all different ways yeah i'm just like flawed by how amazing disney and pixar are able to tap into your emotions every i mean i feel like a lot of people who are kind of out of the disney scene there's like they're for kids they're for kids blah 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 the, the movies are for kids and i think that you can really grow and relate to um to disney and pixar movies and it can help you be a better person by having a different outlook on life and appreciating life more. And so that is one thing that I am so thankful for, for those movies. Yeah. And, um, for sure. and hey, even though it's a weird topic about the saddest movies, I think it's something that we all can look to in order to become better human beings. So, yeah. you know, I'm glad we did this episode. It was a fun one. It was a great one. We said we were going to do it and we did it. We did. Yeah. So... 
Anyways, uh, next week we are gonna actually be having some guests on. We're gonna be having. Ahead. Yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> so fun. After this sad episode, yeah. we're having um, Disney Bars blog on to our podcast. We've been wanting this to happen for so long, and so we're finally, finally getting we them on it. a Disney Bars blog. Check them out on Instagram. They're literally the best, and it's gonna be so much fun. So join us next week as we have them on. Uh, We love you guys, and thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for listening. See you guys. Bye, guys.